So this one kind of stings. I love Forza, both Motorsport and Horizon. Forza Motorsport 3 and 4 in particular were the games that finally had me convinced that maybe Gran Turismo could finally be dethroned as the console sim racer. Hell, I'm one of the world's six Forza 7 apologists. That game rules, you're just playing it wrong. Forza 8's finally hit. oh sorry, it's a reboot. Uh, Forza Motorsport's finally here after a six year hiatus since 7, but it sits in the same space that Gran Turismo 7 does for me. Jump in a car and do laps around a track and it feels amazing, but every other system at play seems intent on hampering that enjoyment and I'd go as far as saying that Turn 10 seem kind of out of touch. Taking criticisms aimed at previous Forza games and addressing them in well-meaning but pretty silly ways. Hell, I'd argue that this is this year's Cyberpunk. It's launched in such a state that will test your patience with shoddy PC performance and progression resetting bugs. At least those can be fixed. Whether the game's divisive progression will be addressed is still up in the air. So Forza career modes tend to mix things up with every new release, which is neat, but it tends to be very hit and miss. Everything up to 4 has a more open career mode with a good mix of progression and freedom, and then everything afterward feels too rigid and curated, from 6's play these exact championships in this exact order 6 times, to 7's homologation system. Forza 8's Builder's Cup, complete with improper grammar, is no different, and I think it's progressed in some ways, but regressed in a lot of others. The big new thing is the car point system, driving a car repeatedly, performing clean sections, following the racing line, getting good lap times in practice mode and overtaking opponents gives that car XP and levels it up, and with each new level gained you unlock new parts to equip to your car, as well as a steadily growing pool of- Ah oh, no sweetie, why did you name it that? I kinda like this system. In theory, what it's supposed to do is get you to form a bond with and give half a shit about the cars you drive, sticking with them long enough to unlock the best upgrades like engine and drivetrain swaps and body kits. It's also probably to deter people from jumping into a car, immediately sticking a V12 in it, then jumping online and piling into every opponent on turn one. What it actually does is turns owning cars into a tedious grind. Even if you buy duplicate cars, they always start at level 1, so you can't, for example, buy an RX-7 designed for racing, level it up to 50, then buy another for drifting, and immediately tune it as you see fit. You'll have to go through the grind again, and after finishing a 6 race series, which typically takes about 2 hours including practice sessions, I'd find a car would be anywhere between level 20 to 25, so that's a 3, 4, maybe 5 hour grind just to unlock parts. In fairness, Forza was pretty quick to pump out an update that lessened the grind, lowering things like weight reduction from level 20 to level 12 and body kits from 50 to 20. You still need to level up to get the car points necessary to install these parts, but since everything unlocks quicker, you can tune your car however you like within a shorter time frame. It's a good change, but I expect people would still prefer the alternative of simply spending credits on parts instead. At least if the career mode complemented the system well, it would be a little less of an issue, except wow, it doesn't. The career mode is very similar to Forza 7's, a bunch of series filled with 5 or 6 races where you're limited to a particular kind of car, like hot hatches, JDM classics, modern muscle, etc. One of the biggest criticisms of Forza 7 was that outside of an open series, any one car could only be used in one specific series. An Impreza could only be used in the Modern Rally Championship, the McLaren F1 in the Retro Supercars event, yada yada. It's the exact same issue here, except now it's lampshaded because they want you to use cars repeatedly to max out their level, but do not give you the space to do so. Like I mentioned, by the time you finish a series, your car's sitting in the low to mid 20s, so if you want to max it out, you've got to either run it in free play or online. Hell, you can't even take previously leveled up cars into the open class events where you can use any car, the game forces you to buy a new one. It's absolutely one of the most tone deaf things Turn 10 has ever done in the history of the series, and yet what frustrates me most is that it could be an enjoyable system. I mean, I think we'd all prefer if it was gone entirely, but if it were paired up with a career mode or progression system similar to an earlier Forza Motorsport or Gran Turismo, where you acquire a car and use it across multiple events, it'd at least kind of make sense. Buy a crummy used Lancer for the Sunday Cup, then level it up so it can be competitive in other events like the Clubman Cup or the Evo meeting or whatever. Again, not the preferable method of progression, but at least the two pieces would fit together. Locking upgrades behind an EXP system, but not giving enough EXP to unlock all of a car's parts before you can never use it again in the career mode is asinine. It's all cock no balls. I'd explain my reasoning behind this analogy, but I like making money. For all my criticisms of the Builder's Cup though, I still kind of enjoy it. Way more than Gran Turismo 7's weird, silly, stupid, no good cafe menu shit anyway. 
feels weird to say GT7's the one that was way too generous with prize cars compared to Forza. Like, I only owned 12 or so cars in the 15 hours I played, which is a nice change of pace for the series, you know? For me, the biggest issue is there's nothing here. Tutorial aside, there are 20 events split amongst five tours, each having four series consisting of five to six races each, and then a single race showcase at the end of each tour. There are around 100 races here, which I do appreciate that between doing practice laps at the start followed by the 8 to 12 minute race afterward, races do feel kind of substantial, like actual events for a change, instead of the usual 2 to 4 minute bullshit. But it still feels totally gutted compared to any Forza prior. Almost all the events are about driving mundane cars, Japanese tuners this, German saloons that. There is not a single event that has you driving anything faster than an Aston Martin. All those cool hypercars you see in the shop? Can't use a single one in the career mode. All the actual racing cars, the GT3 stuff, the LMPs you'd find roaring down the Mulsanne straight? You wanted to drive those? <laughs> Free play or bust. So just to reiterate, the motorsport vehicles are not usable in the career mode of a game called Forza fucking Motorsport. Nope, those events are coming later as limited time tours that you have about a month to finish before they go poof. The perfect mix of FOMO and drip feeding to create the ultimate Remy Raccoon proof experience. At the bare minimum, I think these eventual limited time tours should be added to the game permanently. But in an ideal world, they just put some damn events in the game right from the start, you know? You're telling me you only have 20 slots for career events and you couldn't fit in some proper motorsport events, yet you wasted two of them on championships where you can only drive an MX-5 or a Fox Body Mustang? As it is, when Forza Motorsport eventually goes offline, it'll become the Guitar Hero Live of racing games. All the cool songs will go poof and you'll be stuck with <laughs> fucking Berserk by Eminem. <laughs> Except Forza Motorsport is always online and requires a connection to download information for these events before you can enter them because it's a stinky games as a service model, so actually when it goes offline it just becomes lost media. An urban legend like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, or Tracy Grimshaw. The thing that really sucks though, oh god it feels so good to play. All issues aside, when you're just driving? This is the best the series has ever felt, at least on a regular old gamepad. The way the game handles traction and grip in particular feels like a huge improvement over 7. There, you push beyond your car's limits and kind of get thrown into a drift, whereas here there's a more realistic build up to that moment. There's a spectrum of control, more than 7's old, almost binary system of, you're in control! Now you're not, dumbass. Ever since Forza got weather and time of day options, it's always said that you'd be able to really feel the difference of the warmer tarmac during daylight as opposed to roads during cold and night racing, but it was kind of hard to spot. Here, I started a race at Laguna Seca in the middle of patchy morning fog and felt I could push my car without losing control, but by the time the road had warmed up as the fog parted and let the sun through, I was wrestling with the wheel a bit more as I started to oversteer. The upgrade system also really helps me get to know which parts do what, so I can really feel the exact differences between a stock Bentley Continental and when I slap better parts onto it, going from handling like a boat to a jet ski, and knowing exactly what caused it. That sounds dumb, yeah, but I'm also dumb. Tuning cars is an art, and I am finger painting. Of course, problems don't magically disappear when you're out on the track either. AI is still laughably stupid, brake checking me on the straight at Spa or getting caught up doing 40Ks an hour at the inner loop at Watkins Glen. But let first place get too far out in front on most difficulties and you're really gonna bust your ass trying to catch up to them. It's as if they can drive perfectly when they can adhere to the racing line, but the second they leave it, you can see the intelligence debuffs flying off of them. Visually, it's also a bit of a mess. Uh, I played a bit of this on both PC and Xbox Series S, and on performance mode on the latter, while it clung to 60fps for its dear life, the environments took a pretty big hit. Lens flare and lighting can also be really obnoxious, especially when it gets so bright that you can't even see the racing line, and PC performance is real shaky, at least on my system. Fair play, I don't meet the recommended specs with my 2060 and i7-8700, but I still got anywhere between 60 to 80fps at 1440p on medium with DLSS set to performance mode. Some tracks would tank my frame rate though, particularly Suzuka and Road America, despite running just fine in more demanding wet weather conditions. The biggest ding against the game though, at least at the time of writing, is the fact that I simply cannot play it as intended. There are some incredibly frustrating bugs to prevent progress. The most common one for me is the game locking up on this screen after applying new upgrades following a race, forcing a restart which, for some reason, remembers your car level but not what races you did. If you did four races before encountering this bug, you have to do those four races again the next time you load in. My fix was to simply do a race, quit out of the game immediately after, load back in, then apply upgrades, rinse and repeat for every race, which, yeah, tedious as hell. Except Except at some point not even this worked, as I'd do a race, quit before applying upgrades, open the game again and I'd be right back where I started last session. Between these two bugs, which happened no matter what system I was playing on, my progress was erased 9 times in my 15 hours of playtime, and I'll be totally honest, it's kind of unacceptable. 
at least it can be fixed, but the one thing I truly despise in video games is having my time wasted like that. Keep in mind as I say this, as I didn't try any online modes, so I can't say if it fares any better there, but as of now, I can't recommend Forza Motorsport. Even though it's absolutely the best in the series when it comes to the core driving experience, everything, everything surrounding it is either a questionable mess or just plain unacceptable. With exception to some PC performance issues in their first few attempts, Forza has always been an incredibly polished and content rich experience, so to see the new Forza in a state that can really only be described as a shell of its former self is both disappointing and perhaps an indicator that something just ain't right with game development these days. Something really has to change. There is hope, as the game's intended to be a platform upon which Turn 10 will build and improve, offering new tracks and monthly events, so eventually it'll probably be a game I can recommend, albeit maybe with a couple of asterisks. But like, ugh, man, 2023 is filled with so many good games that people are spoilt for choice, and of course the game I was most looking forward to turned out to be the year's Cyberpunk. Okay, maybe not that extreme depending on your own experience, but there's a great game here somewhere, so if Forza Motorsport dies before it can reach its true potential, I'm gonna be so fucking mad. <laughs> Hey, sorry for the wait, uh, blah blah blah, life's hectic, blah blah blah, working on new stuff, blah blah blah, I'm not gonna saddle you with all that for now. I just wanna say thank you, as always, to the people who still stick around and support the channel, including Furball, Sofox, K, Damian Maxted, Johanna Sanderson, Riley Urban, Feeny Shea, Heathood Skyet, Jayet, is it Jayet or Yayet? I keep forgetting to ask, I'm sorry. But, uh, Kurote the Kitsune, Pear Basket, Phil Belk, Squid Superstar, and Sadie Killer. Anyway, follow me on Twitter or Blue Sky if Twitter eventually implodes, it probably will. Support me through Patreon or Coffee and join the Discord. I promise I'll remember to check there again within the next 38 years.